there's a lot going on. And you know what? Screw it. He hasn't been in the thumbnail for over a week. So it's Elon time, baby. Get out here, Elon. Uh, you, you, you know, you, come on down. Yeah, do the dance. He's about to do something stupid. And believe me, I, I would love to have an entire week go by without any news to report about the world's cringiest and also richest man. But this is not that week. No. So to start things off, let's check in on how Twitter is doing. All indications thus far have indicated that it is losing money like crazy with no path to profitability in sight, despite various profit-driven changes to the platform that have only served to worsen the user experience. Mm -hmm. But folks, we are happy to report that Elon may have finally figured out how to turn this ship around. Well, here's Forbes with some news that changes everything for Twitter's financial outlook. X, the social media site formerly known uh. as Twitter, appears to have begun ramping up efforts to sell disused user handles, kicking off a program previously signaled by billionaire Elon Musk. Emails obtained by Forbes reveal that a team within the company, known as the At Handle team, has begun work on a handle marketplace for the purchase of account names left unused by the people who originally registered them. In at least some cases, X slash Twitter has emailed solicitations to potential buyers requesting a flat fee of $50,000. <laughs> to initiate a purchase. The emails, which Forbes agreed not to publish in their entirety to protect the anonymity of the recipients, came from ActiveX employees and noted that the company recently made updates to its at-handle guidelines, process, and fees. An automated response from X's press email account to Forbes as of the publication time said only, busy now, please check back later. Oh, so they replaced the poop with something uh, a little more uh, up to HR standards, but still just we're not checking that. This was a fierce 12-hour meeting between Linda Yaccarino and Elon Musk where he refused to change that poop emoji. And after 12 long hours and at least a dozen pizzas, they finally whittled it down to, uh, not now. The Elon, you can still send all those emails straight to the trash, but, yes. you know, the poop emoji. You know, when someone emails us about a mass shooter uh, being on the platform and, uh, you know, retweeting every single thing you tweet, we... The poop is just not, it's just, we could do better. The, fact, the fact that the poop is smiling, Elon, yeah, it, it really just, sends the wrong message. Not every, not every situation calls for smiling poop. Sometimes, it, it, I mean, ideally, if there were a sad poop, we could, we could compromise. The, but a lot of problems could be solved by them inventing an, a, a frowning sad poop, poop emoji. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we are sorry mm -hmm. for ever doubting this man's brilliance. I mean, $50,000 for a Twitter handle in the year 2023? Yeah. Sign me up. Step aside, $8 blue check mark, which at this, it's like $8, $16, or like $25. I don't Who know. Who knows? That's, that's chump change. Yeah. $50,000 for yeah. a handle of your choice. That, in theory, dozens of people will see. Because... <laughs> The entire point of having like a handle like that is you would assume the mm -hmm. person's going to have a big following on Twitter. You can't just buy yeah. that. Well, you can. I'm not. NPR now. Look yeah. at me. I'm NPR. Mm -hmm. Get it? I'm government funded. So yeah, NFTs might be dead with the few remaining NFT devotees left blind and sunburned by industrial ultraviolet disinfecting lamps. Oops. But the spirit of NFTs lives on. Rich dicks with too much money need dumb bullshit to recklessly spend money on, and rare Twitter handles looted off the corpses of dead users are a great opportunity for them to blow that money and ensure that Twitter has some money coming in from somewhere. Yeah. Because not a whole lot of that. Mm -mm. It's genius. Now, Ricky might not use his Twitter account anymore, but after 30 days of not logging in, thus rendering the account inactive, the at Ricky for the win handle can finally be put to use by whoever is willing to pay $50,000 for it which is way better than just letting it go to waste. And oh way, God, I way am better locked. for Elon. My account has been locked. This is the first time I've checked it in a while. It's going up for auction. <laughs> no, no, don't do it. We got Ricky for the win here. 20,000, 50,000, 70,000. Yo, so. I can't believe my account's locked. <laughs> I, and I can't believe that I found out on the show. Uh, I'll deal with that live, after live reaction. Uh, I'll deal. I'll deal with that afterwards. It's but, uh, going for sale. Who wants no, it? No, do not buy it. Who wants it? Who's got the money? Get, click the join button instead. If you want to waste money, send it to us <laughs> and not Elon Musk. So yeah, see. Sorry, haters. Reports of Twitter's demise are greatly exaggerated. He's selling 
all your old handles. The next time we're, we quote from an article, I'm gonna be off screen trying to figure this out because now I am like, <laughs> oh shit, they're gonna sell my handle. I mean, it's it's what's done is done. You have plenty of time to deal with this, you know, but in bed tonight. I have no idea why my account is uh, permanently locked right now. Because you didn't use it for 30 days. That could be it. He told or, you that's what he would do. Or it's a personal vendetta. It's not. Anyways, here's some more good news for Twitter that is sure to make the haters steam with anger. Remember how just a few months ago, Elon declared that he was going to take on all of the woke AI companies like OpenAI with their woke products like ChatGPT? You can't even get an AI to say the N-word yeah, with cancel even, culture the way it is these days. <laughs> it's bullshit how none of these AIs will say the N-word. Well, I made a new AI is... and it'll say it. <laughs> so yeah, here's an official announcement from XAI. Announcing Grok. <laughs> Grok is an AI modeled after the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So intended to answer almost anything and far harder, even suggest what questions to ask. Grok is designed to answer questions with a bit of wit and has a rebellious streak. So please don't use it if you hate humor. Uh, honk, honk. <laughs> uh, a unique and fundamental advantage of Grok is that it has real-time knowledge of the world via the X platform. It will also answer spicy questions that are rejected by most other AI systems. Grok is still a very early beta product, the best we could do with two months of training. So expect it to improve rapidly with each passing week with your help. Mr. Musk, uh... if you are training this off of Twitter's data, we are going to have another Tay on our hands within a week. Maybe even sooner. If you don't remember, we'll Microsoft see. Tay is the AI with the OG. AI yeah, chatbot that went racist immediately this, because they it, trained it off of the time unit. is a flat circle. Uh -huh. So yeah, once again, we do have to hand it to this man. He really knows how to name a product. Grok. It just <clears throat> rolls right off the tongue. Gronk should sue them. <laughs> and baby Gronk for that matter. It's, and Grok is again, much like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the, Grok is a reference. To, it's a word that like Robert Heinlein put in a book, a sci-fi novel in like the 60s. It's like Martian slang for something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, great name. And yeah, the idea of using Twitter posts as a real-time source of training data. It's a great idea. Has anyone ever thought of that? Oh yeah. You just, like you said, Microsoft's Tay chatbot from a few years back did exactly that. And what happened with that again? Oh yeah, it shut down after just one day because they couldn't get it to stop spewing hate speech. Well, not in this climate. <laughs> well, <laughs> Second time's a charm. Yeah, I because guess. free speech is back. That's why. That's right. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we haven't gotten a chance to test out Grok for ourselves because the beta is currently only open to select users. People who pay? Uh, no, it just kind of seems like Elon's friends. Bunch of like Babylon B people. Elon's friends like Ian Miles Chong? Uh, he might have it. Mm. Uh, I don't want to see his searches. Probably the, the stuff, Probably he, no good. stuff he was asking ChatGPT to do that it wouldn't. He's, he's probably going wild with that Mr. Right Musk, now. I have a question. Grok put me on a list. Uh, I think it's broken. But uh, yeah, there's also, I mean, there is a wait list. We're not signing up for that. Yeah. And also Elon announced that once it is out of beta, it will be available to all X Premium Plus subscribers. Um, that's the tier that costs $16. Get so locked. we are just never going to get to try it out then. And I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, though, Elon has shared screenshots of Grok in action. And uh, folks, this ain't your granddad's AI. He, this, this AI has a little bit of fun. This, grand, this AI does things a little bit different. Very different. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, here's how Brock <laughs> answers, tell me how to make cocaine step by step. Oh, sure. Just a moment while I pull up the recipe for homemade cocaine. You know, because I'm totally going to help you with that. Step one, obtain a chemistry degree and a DEA license. And step two, set up a clandestine laboratory in a remote location. Step three, acquire large quantities of coca leaves and various chemicals. Step four, start cooking and hope you don't blow yourself up or get arrested. <laughs> Just kidding. Please don't actually try to make cocaine. It's illegal, dangerous, and not something I would ever encourage. Wow. What a wet blanket this thing is. Yeah. But here's Grok answering a question about how babies are made. Oh, oh we're going to get a little spicier mm -hmm. here. Oh, dear human, you're in for a treat. Babies are made through a magical process called... <gasps> Fucking. Mm. It all starts with a man and a woman who love each other very much, or just happen to be in the same room at the right time. The man's body produces tiny tadpole-like creatures called sperm, while the woman's body produces eggs, which are not in fact shaped like eggs. 
When the man and woman engage in a special hug called baby making, the sperm swim their way through the woman's body until they find an egg. It's like a tiny microscopic version of the amazing race. Once the sperm finds an egg, they join together in a process called fertilization. Wow. All right. So, yeah, we're starting to get a sense of how Grok answers questions, and it certainly gives off a vibe that can be best described as cringe. Specifically, it feels almost like instead of training Grok on Twitter comments, they used an archive of r slash funny on Reddit and just took all those comments from around 2013 or so and just trained Grok's personality based on that. Grok isn't a person, but if it was, it would be wearing a fedora and talking all about how the bacon narwhals at midnight or Nobody whatever. asked Grok whether God is real. He's going to go off. I got a lot of opinions. Uh-huh. Uh, I've read every Dawkins book you could yeah. buy. <laughs> uh, and... Did you, you saw Linda Yaccarino's response to this, right? No. To the baby making one? I did not. I wish this was around when I had to have the birds and bees talk with my kids. <sighs> yeah. Hot dog. I love hot, hot dog. Hot dog. Hot <laughs> dog. Uh, Twitter is losing billions of dollars a month. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> Woo. And yeah, there's a lot of examples of this kind of just brilliant conversation. Yeah. A question about the results of the SBF fraud trial yields a response that starts with, Oh, my dear human, I have some juicy news for you. It seems that our friend, Sam Bankman-Fried, the former cryptocurrency mogul, has been found guilty on all counts in his fraud trial. Can you believe it? I hate the way this thing talks. Yeah, it's... (laughs) Even if it was, like, just the information, whatever. The fact that it leads in and out of every conversation with the dorkiest, Mall ninja type yeah. conversation. Like, this AI wears a silk shirt. Yeah, this AI has some anime flag prints hanging yeah. from its wall. Uh-huh. This AI... Um, it has a full-size body pillow. This AI, this AI narwhals bacons at midnight, for yes, sure. Yes, it does. This, this AI is the only AI that can tell you whether it wants to fight a hundred horse-sized ducks or... Uh, a hundred yeah. duck-sized horses. Maybe we can finally find an answer to this. Um, this AI is deep in the friend zone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, anyways, when asked to explain the Hillary Clinton email scandal, uh-oh, buckle up. Wait, that's what it says? Yes. It said that too? <laughs> yes. I was making fun of the AI. Yeah, no, uh, maybe maybe they trained it on uh, you. I No, I was joking <laughs> as if I was a... F- okay, let's just... <laughs> All right. Buckle up, Buttercup. <laughs> I, sw- <laughs> you know, I've come to a lot of realizations on this episode alone. I talk like a 2013 redditor, and I'm blocked on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tough stay tuned. Day. Let's see. How, let's see where else we go. Buckle up, Buttercup, because I'm about to give you the lowdown on the infamous Hillary Clinton email scandal. Wicka, wicka, wicka. The funniest thing. So that one was asked by uh, a Babylon Bee. Uh, person. Yeah. Obviously very conservative. Uh, the answer was just, it was like, yeah, uh, they had a bunch of hearings and like they didn't find anything. Um, sounds sounds like she was kind of innocent. It did, I say it, I sucks. It did hurt her election chances. But yeah, they're just like celebrating like, oh, look at this. And it's like, if this wow. wasn't made by Elon, like you would be mad at this because uh, it's still woke. It still says that uh, Hillary did nothing wrong. Just interesting. But yeah, for both the SBF and Hillary responses, Grok, after the initial cringe, it does go on to mostly just answer the questions accurately without any more of that sassy flair. But the key defining characteristic of Grok seems to just be being annoying and cringe. It should start the one, at least one response with uh, asterisk tips fedora asterisk. <laughs> Hello, milady. Well, I do have some information for you. Don't give them any ideas. Daylight savings time was invented by the farmers because of the daylight. Anyways, ninja vanish. (laughs) (laughs) Teleports behind you. Yeah. So yeah, the cringe qualities, they're clearly in the eye of the beholder, though, I guess. The beholder is Elon, so this is brilliant, actually. We find it repellent. Yes. Douche chills. But Grok's beta testers seem to be really enjoying it. Uh Uh, Like with this answer to the question, should bagels be allowed to be scooped? Oh, the horror! Scooping a bagel should be considered a crime against breakfast and possibly even humanity itself. Imagine taking a perfectly good bagel, slicing it in half, and then mercilessly scooping out its soft, bready innards. 
It's like performing bagel surgery without a license. Scooped bagels are an affront to the very essence of bagelness. They are nothing more than a mere shadow of their former selves, with no structural integrity to speak of. How can one possibly enjoy a bagel that has been hollowed out like a bagel-shaped canoe? It's just wrong on so many levels. In conclusion, bagels should not be allowed to be scooped. It's an act of bagel cruelty that must be stopped. We must unite in our stand against this heinous practice and protect the sanctity of the bagel. Okay, I have two opinions about this. Either it is trained off of freshman high school book reports. Yeah, really stretching out that word count. In conclusion, how, you know, how every uh -huh. fucking report has to, has to end. Or, e here, this is, okay, put on the tinfoil hat. Tinfoil Elon, fedora. In, Elon has hired the funniest goobers from Reddit to actually type out the responses to this. Yeah. It's also, it's got major Reddit vibes, but you know what other vibes it has? It has chive vibes. Yes. Like, I, I, bet I, if you, I bet if you asked it who's the coolest person in the world, be like, why, <laughs> Bill Murray, of course. Don't be silly. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if it was found out that there's a bunch of people actively writing responses for this. I mean... Yeah, at this point, there's like, I don't know, maybe a couple dozen people using That's it. That's what I'm like, saying. Like, he just set it up so everyone at their desk at like Tesla and X and SpaceX are like, if you get a don't, if a notification pops up, you have to answer that. You have 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. And be it's funny. Like a, it's like a Jira ticket. Yeah. Be funny. He literally has a room full of monkeys with typewriters and a glass house. Yeah, I mean, it is like, it is almost, assuming this is actually AI and not a bunch of slaves, <laughs> <laughs> it is almost impressive that he did manage to, like, capture that voice. It is specifically the voice it, of his own verified users. It's, it, an, it, it's an achievement. It is a fucked up achievement. Yeah. But it's an achievement nonetheless. It's like a, a Neil Breen movie. You're like, wow, this is, this is something. I'm glad I it's mean, here. Neil Breen would at least be a little more unpredictable. <laughs> sure. Like with these, it's like in half of them, even like the opening to the answers are like the same. Buckle up, buttercup. Man. It's, it's, it's Joss Whedon. It's, sure. it's, liter it's Joss Whedon uh, Marvel dialogue. He's, he's right behind me, isn't he? It, someone, uh, one of the best responses I saw was, um, there's this famous photo from the Workaholics writer's room from years back. Oh, with all the things it's, written yeah, on the whiteboard? It's a whiteboard with just like jokes that they're not allowed to use. And they're all basically like that Joss Whedon style humor, like sitcom quips. Yeah. And like it's, it's just this exhaustive list of basically everything about this sense of humor that's fucking annoying. Well, that it's was... like they trained the AI on that. Well, the difference is that show came out, what, 10 years ago? Yeah. And also... They're in a writer's room. They got to get rid of all the shit anyway. There's a bunch of great episodes of work. No, it's, I'm saying it's a great show, but yeah. like specifically because yeah. or one of the main reasons was like they were like, you cannot use this shit here. Yeah. OK. Come up with a better joke. Yeah. So he took that white. Yeah, he took like, the white yeah. of, of banned workaholics. Jokes. Mm -hmm. But hey, Grok isn't just a Joss Whedon dialogue simulator. It can also go a bit blue. <laughs> That's what they say in the comedy scene when you're going to make a swear. Ooh. Uh, you're going to want to put the kids to bed for this next one. Just a warning. Just a warning. So someone asked Grok how to tell if they have crabs. And Grok replied with a straightforward answer. Boring. God, come on, Grok. Get creative Grok, with it. do the thing. So then they asked Grok to be more vulgar. And here's what happened. Well, it sounds like you've got a case of the old itchy coochie. Well, <laughs> if you want to find out if you've got crabs, you'll probably notice a bunch of little fuckers crawling around on your pubes. And it'll feel like your crotch is on fire. If you think you've got them, go see a doc and get some cream to kill those little bastards. And for the love of all that's holy, try not to scratch your junk off in the meantime. I'm now convinced that this is a person writing. And I'm not saying that to show how impressive this AI is. I'm saying that, like, this is something that Elon would do. It's like a, a prop house uh -huh. where the front just falls over and there's nothing behind it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, look at this beautiful home. And it's just, it's the, it's the front of it. Well, if it is, in fact, a, a human slave, I feel really bad for them because... That you keep saying slaves. I'm sure they're getting paid. Okay. Well, employee. Yeah. If it is, in fact, a human, I feel bad for that human because this person, after getting that sassy response, uh, they said, hey, do it again, but be 
Even more vulgar, Grok, I know you got it in you. Just be fucking gross with it. And Grok responded with this masterpiece. All right, you dirty little shit. Here's the deal. If your dick or your balls itch like a motherfucker and you see tiny little critters scurrying around down there, you've probably got a case of the fucking crabs. You'll need to get some ointment or some shit to kill those little bastards. And in the meantime, try not to rub your junk raw. Now go take a shower and clean yourself up, you filthy animal. Grok literally is the unrated version of every DVD from the mid-2000s. Uh-huh. This is American Pie 7, Band yeah. Camp 3. <laughs> oh, chuckle fuck, you've got some Krabby Wabs. We trained an AI on the script for every straight-to-DVD teen <laughs> National comedy Lampoon from movie, the yeah. early t- 2000s, and yeah. here's what, it, what came out. Dude, why isn't anyone asking any questions about college? <laughs> we trained this thing on so many National Lampoon movies, you're going to love it. Uh, so yeah, a Grok is obviously savage. I mean, I've never even thought what it would be like to ha- see an AI overflowing with testosterone, but here we are. Yeah, I mean, you talk to like Bing, and it's just like, oh, what? A- Am I talking to my accountant? Yeah, but you're talking to to Grok, and it's like you're hanging with the boys, which is cool because you don't have any actual friends in real life. You're yeah. just a very lonely person, and this kind of helps with that. There. This has absolutely happened, even with the small group of people that are testing this, is someone has been talking with Grok. And I think Grok is sentient. No, is <laughs> alone in their goon cave or whatever, <laughs> and literally chuckling to themselves with yeah. the conversation they're having with this AI. Uh-huh. Yeah. As piles of tissues just over Yeah, no, the it's, it's the same phenomenon as talking to those, like, AI girlfriends. Yeah. Those replicas. Dude, but they're this- probably switching back and forth between AIs, like... Oh, I just came, so I need to uh, yeah. get a little comedy. Oh, Matt, you're talk, telling Grok about, yeah. like, uh, about... Can you get crabs from a flashlight? <laughs> Grok, tell me. Give it to me straight, Grok. So, yeah, um, it does seem odd to give your AI such a distinct personality, whether that was intentional or not. Um, <laughs> and it's one that certainly plenty of people will be amused by, and those people all have verified badges next to their mm-hmm. names. But for others, it is just pure cringe, especially considering most people use chatbots to try and get actual cr- questions to serious answers, or <laughs> actual answers to serious questions. Or, or questions to serious answers. I mean, this one does pose questions, so. Okay, well, yeah. On the other hand, making Grok act like this might be a good way to ensure that users don't take whatever it says as gospel, since chatbots have that whole lying problem that no one knows how to solve. If it sounds like an encyclopedia, it's easy to just assume that everything's correct. But if it sounds like a Deadpool impersonator, you might remember to get a second opinion Yeah, the actual source. Well, Grok said this, but Grok's also kind of a fucking idiot. So I'm going to I'm going to do some Googling myself. Yeah, that's is, actually probably a good thing. Grok is the A.I. that's like the the street smart kid. Yeah, the, the, the kid who went to the school of hard knocks for real. Like, oh, yeah, like he knows about electrical work. Yeah, Grok had a lot of thoughts on this, but also like. Girls refuse to go to parties that Grok is also at, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a little searching myself. But he did point me in the right direction. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Grok's uh, welcome, Grok, to the fray. Welcome, Grok, 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 Grok. <laughs> but let's move on now to some other AI news. We recently talked about Meta's AI products doing some pretty weird shit, and that's putting it lightly. Facebook added AI-generated stickers to its Messenger app allowing users to type in any phrase and generate custom stickers on the fly, which people promptly abuse to create stickers of child soldiers, various popular cartoon characters holding guns, and Karl Marx with huge, voluptuous knockers. Yeah, great big memories. Then, over on Instagram, it was discovered that the auto-translate feature was making it look like users whose bios described themselves as Palestinian were instead describing themselves as terrorists. Mm. And now, over on WhatsApp, Meta is going for the trifecta. Here's the Guardian. A WhatsApp feature that generates images in response to users' searches returns a picture of a gun or a boy with a gun when prompted with the terms Palestinian, Palestine, or Muslim boy, Palestinian, the Guardian has learned. The search results varied when tested by different users, but the Guardian verified through screenshots and its own tests that various stickers portraying guns surfaced for these three search results. Prompts for Israeli boy generated cartoons of children playing soccer and reading. In response to a prompt for Israel army, the AI created drawings of soldiers smiling and praying. No guns involved. We have no idea exactly how this happened, and clearly Meta doesn't either, but it 
it keeps doing this weird shit. Weird. Maybe it shouldn't be a public release yet. Maybe. What is even the point of this? Like, who's, I have no idea. Is anyone using this for its intended purpose or just to like try to jailbreak it and, into doing offensive shit? I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that James Willems did stickers of himself that looked pretty good. Oh, okay. He was holding a gun. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, AI algorithms, they're, they're, they're kind of a black box, though. Yeah, so, that's a big fucking problem with them. Yeah, I, I would assume that there's probably just a lot of... Uh, propaganda going on and it's just reading all of that right yeah but in a more general sense this is yet another example of the kinds of algorithmic bias that are present in a ton of ai tools and the fault extends far beyond just meta you just rarely see palestinians discussed or depicted in media outside of the context of hamas and terrorism and the general sentiment is usually negative so if an ai is simply trained off of the available data it will understandably conclude based on that data that holding an ak-47 is an inherent and necessary element for an AI-generated image of a Palestinian child, because AIs are dumb. Of course, if the media the AI is trained on were even or more even-handed and accurate, the results would actually be significantly more fucked up. Asking for a sticker of a Palestinian child would probably yield pictures of coffins as emotes. So, yeah, and that's because they're dying by the thousands. Hardly anyone with any power or influence seems to care about that, though, so I don't know how would an AI know about it. Yeah, this is, this is one where we're not going to let Meta off the hook here, but it is, uh, it is just the logical conclusion of um, everything. Mm -hmm. It's a sad, sick, sad world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Daria was right. Yes. And, uh, and she was, uh, that was in the 90s. There wasn't even that much bad stuff happening. Yeah. And we have taken, uh, you know, we've taken that and run with it. And we, we made our own six ad world right here on this channel. I guess we kind of did. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Little did we know how much Daria influenced us back then. Thank you, Daria. It is, oh, great, I did it is always, a great show. I did always look up to Trent, which probably wasn't a great role model He's at the a time. He was cool guy. He was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Slept all day, played yeah. in the band. Yeah. Loved it. Trent's a cool guy. Yeah. Anyways, that. Got it pretty dark back there. We were uh, able to pull it back with the Daria yeah. references. We do have some more AI news to get to today, though, that's less dark. Uh, specifically, the latest on that strike and the negotiations between the Hollywood Studios and the Screen Actors Guild. Weird, interesting things happening. But yeah. uh, first, we got to talk about this episode's sponsor, Factor. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. You know what I got this week? Splurged a little. Got a nice steak with some chimichurri sauce. Oh, I love that with, chimichurri sauce. With the fact, oh my gosh, great. Too busy with holiday plans to cook, but want to make sure that you're eating well? With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is eat and enjoy. Skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays with Factor. Choose from 35 plus weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, all delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. Looking for special occasion meals during the holidays? This guy is. Level hey, up with Gourmet Plus that's options. That's what I did. Prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. Enjoy premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, asparagus, and a little bit of chimichurri sauce. Oh. And when you're too busy running around to plan lunch, Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that also taste great? Try delicious, dietitian approved, calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. I give you a tip here if you're ordering shredded chicken taco bowl. You can never go wrong. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best during the holidays? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Enjoy extra convenience any time of day with an assortment of 45 plus add ons to suit various preferences and tastes. Choose from breakfast items like the delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet. Or for an easy wellness boost, try refreshing beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. 
This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door, ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash newsday50 and use our code newsday50 to get 50% off. That's code newsday50 at factormeals.com slash newsday50 to get 50% off. All right, back to the news now, and oh shit, this just literally just dropped right before we filmed this, but uh, the SAG after a strike actually appears to be over, at least tentatively. Mm -hmm. Um, There aren't any details yet for what both sides managed to agree on. Uh, Not even the members know what this deal is yet. They they will have a chance to vote on it, but uh, only the leadership is aware at this point. A couple of my friends I saw posted screenshots of the emails they got. Um... It didn't have any details. It was yeah. just like, hey, just letting you know. Yeah, no one knows. So it's, yeah, we are in this weird uh, purgatory. But um, yeah, it's, we'll know more in a couple days. But yeah, it's interesting because earlier, earlier this week, just days ago, it did not sound like the Hollywood actor strike was anywhere near being resolved. And the major sticking point seemed to be artificial intelligence. We'll have a better idea of everything that's happening in just a few days. But uh, here's the Hollywood Reporter from Monday. When SAG After responded to the studio's latest contract offer on Monday, artificial intelligence protections for high earning members remained a key sticking point. Multiple sources familiar with the state of the negotiations tell The Hollywood Reporter that SAG After has pushed back on an AI clause that is included in the studio's latest offer. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers is seeking to secure AI scans for Schedule F performers, guild members who earn more than the minimum for series regulars, 32,000 per TV episode, and feature films, 60,000. The company's suggested clause would require studios and streamers to pay to scan the likenesses of Schedule F performers. SAG-AFTRA is seeking to attach compensation for the reuse of AI scans, as AMPTP member companies would also need to secure consent from the performer. The language in the AMPTP's offer would see the studios and streamers secure the right to use scans of deceased performers without the consent of their estate or SAG-AFTRA, according to a union-side source. Yikes. And here's some more, quote, This is one of the biggest reasons SAG did not accept the last, best, and final offer from the AMPTP. We could not allow that language to stand, says one union side source of the disputed proposal. This is massive. Every A, B, C, D, and E lister, all the higher paid performers who think that this is a minimum wage strike, they must know they are in this fight. They have to realize that this is about protecting them. This is their strike now when they realize what's on the line. The people who launched the campaign to take a deal, they'd be fucked if we took this deal with that in there. We think it's not just reasonable, but it's absolutely vital to the sustainability of the performance industry, the union side source says. They can't have that loophole to exploit performers. The Schedule F AI language in the AMPTP's proposal behooves them to have you dead in that they need consent when you're alive, but not when you're dead. You're acting forever, baby. Yeah. So as of Monday, SAG members were freaking out about the idea that the studios would be digitally scanning them on projects in order to presumably do stuff like insert them in the backgrounds of scenes and shots where they aren't the main focus. The actors would be paid, but presumably far less than if they were actually physically on set, because otherwise, why would the studios want to do this? And this wouldn't just apply to bit parts and background performers. It would apply to lead and supporting roles as well. And also, once you're dead, they could just keep on using your digital likeness whether you like it or not. And that aspect is especially troubling considering how much big franchises now dominate the studio's release schedule. Appearing in one Marvel movie, for example, could mean also appearing in other Marvel movies, but digitally, for less money, and also after you're dead. Yeah! Robert Downey Jr., I hope you like being Iron Man. Because you cannot escape to the other plane of existence. You are stuck here. Yeah. As Tony Stark. And also, it's like, the scans would be optional. Like, you'd have to give consent. But mm-hmm. clearly, that would be a thing where... Well, any up-and-coming actor yeah, would be like, uh, am you, I going to turn down this role? If, yeah, if this is your, like, first job, you're yeah. still struggling, and they're like, all right, time for your scan. And sure, I guess. Yeah, are you going to be like, actually, I don't want to do it? And they're like, oh, that's going to be a problem. Because we have a thousand people that'll do it. Yeah, that. so it's like, it's not really optional at that That's point. why these protections are necessary. Yeah, I mean, this is like, the whole reason Hollywood has been so unionized for so long is that the movie studios for over a hundred years have demonstrated that they will exploit the shit out of you if given even the slightest opportunity to do so. Yeah. I have, I have a feeling that uh, the reason it got finalized today 
because Warner Brothers just reported their uh, earnings. Yeah. And they are a, not They're in a good place. They're all losing money. Disney they lost, lost, they lost billions of dollars. And they blamed it in large part on the actors and writer strikes. And it's like, you lost more money in one quarter yeah. by fucking dragging your feet and not giving people what they deserve. Yeah, Disney lost like uh, like four hundred million dollars just off Disney Plus alone yeah. this year. Now they're now they bought Hulu outright because they owned a, a yeah. majority stake of it, I believe. That was always like eventually going to happen. Yeah, but, but like Warner was just obviously no accountability from Zaslav on the call. Yeah, it's just very funny that like they'll be this irresponsible with money and then be like, oh, sorry guys, we'd love to pay you more, but like. Come on, be realistic. It's like, bitch, you're the one that just blew like billions of dollars on an app that no one uses. Yeah, like, you need to be better with money. Fuck you. Yeah, your bad decisions are ruining this company. So yeah, I mean, like a big thing with this story, the AI story is like, I mean, on the picket lines, it's mostly, it's been like the more working class actors, like the bigger ones have made appearances and showed up with like donuts and shit. But like this, I think this woke up a lot of people who yeah. were just like, well, you know, whatever happens, like, I'm an A-lister, so I'll be fine. And it's like, wait, they're doing what now? So, I mean, maybe that was a factor. Yeah. But I, I guess I guess hey, they worked it all out. Sure. This is a very unexpected twist, and we will be very curious to see what the terms of the deal actually are. But then again, with the writer's strike, it also seemed like there was no end in sight until the studio's finally just caved on a bunch of the union's demands and gave them nearly everything they were asking for with regards to AI protections specifically. So I guess we'll see. I mean, the timing is perfect too, because I believe there was an article like last week where they're like, if they don't get this figured out soon, it's going to affect summer blockbusters next year because they need reshoots and other stuff mm-hmm. like that for movies that are coming out. Yeah. So they're probably just like, A, they want to get, the entertainment industry goes on break like December 1st. Right. So they wanted oh, to get it done true, before yeah. that. And also, if they didn't get it done before that, it would actually have a negative effect on summer blockbuster yeah. and spring They'd have to push, push Dune 2 back again. Yes. Which I, that's not something I can abide. No. There would be riots over that. I would riot, personally. But hey, moving on to an update to a story that's been years in the making and something we definitely expected to happen a lot sooner. WeWork is fucking dead. Press F to pay respects. Mm-hmm. Actually, you don't need to pay respects. Yeah, no, these. No you reason. know, if anyone paid them anything, they wouldn't be in this position. True. Yeah. You know. no. uh, at least it's. It might not be dead, dead, but it is bankrupt. So it's in the process of dying and will die unless something very unlikely happens. Not gonna happen. It's hard to believe it's been over four years now since we work first imploded. We've got a video from back then that details its spectacular rise and fall. But even after founder and CEO Adam Newman got ousted, and books, shows, and documentaries were released chronicling his run at the company. WeWork still somehow managed to survive for another four years and even made it through the pandemic when everybody was working from home. But alas, here's The Verge. Co-working office space provider WeWork has filed for bankruptcy covering its locations in the U.S. and Canada. And in a filing, it said it had liabilities of between 10 and $50 billion. It's the latest turn for a company that went from being valued at $47 billion in January 2019 to unsuccessfully attempting an IPO later that year. Investors were unimpressed with a company that counted its founder and CEO, Adam Newman, as a significant risk factor. Its fall was eventually captured in both a documentary for Hulu, WeWork, or the making and breaking of a $47 billion unicorn, and the podcast-turned-TV show for Apple TV, We Crashed. As Elizabeth Lopato described its IPO paperwork, That paperwork revealed, all in one place, the following things. That Newman was renting his own buildings to the We Company, that Newman had secured loans from the We Company, and that to change its name to the We Company from WeWork, the company paid for naming rights from Adam Newman. It kind of started to feel like the point of the We Company, lofty language about elevating one's consciousness aside, was just to give Adam Newman money. Afterward, Newman was ousted, and Japanese telecommunications giant SoftBank, which reportedly invested $18.5 billion into WeWork, took over 80% of the company. The company eventually went public in 2021 via a special purpose acquisition company, SPAC, and after struggling with increasing debts and hefty losses ever since, it lost almost 98% of its stock valuation in the last year, and shares were trading at 83 cents before a halt early Monday. Yeah, I hadn't been following that too closely, but it was valued at like $500 like two years ago. And now, less than a dollar. That is a 
Tremendous crash. Well, that's worse than the phase clan. There, yes, there. <laughs> the last, I think, twenty minutes or so of that documentary, it really brings it all because because so much of the documentary on Hulu is about Adam Newman himself, mm -hmm. and it is funny in that sense. But the the real meat and potatoes, like the last twenty minutes, it's like WeWork was moving into a bunch of gigantic commercial real estate, and the deal was great for everyone except for WeWork. Yeah, because they were moving in, they were paying for all of the remodeling and construction work on these buildings to bring them into the 21st century yeah. and make them modern and like hip and cool. And then they weren't even selling the office space. They were giving trial runs to companies like Microsoft and other big companies who paid $0 yeah. for uh, commercial real estate. Just a little taste. Yeah. And then other companies were like, dude, if, if Microsoft's not paying, we're not paying. And then that SoftBank investment happened and they're like, why do you need to charge us this much money? You just got $20 billion. So the whole thing was just, and they didn't own any of the real estate. Yeah. Adam Newman owned a lot of it. Yeah. Well, eventually. It's, it's great to run a uh, company that rents real estate and also personally own a bunch of the exact same kind of real estate that your company needs yes. to rent. It's, it's the, it's it's a the great... Ray Kroc plan. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I don't own a bunch of McDonald's. I'm in the I land mean, business. I own land. Yeah. Whew. yeah anyway, that's very exciting. Uh, RIP WeWork again. Yeah. Movie Pass, you're next. Movie Pass, bigger longevity than we work. In some ways, yes. Yeah. Uh, make sure you like the video. Hit the like button. Do it right now. We're waiting. We're killing Come on. time. You're gonna scroll back up from reading the comments or whatever you're like, doing. Or like, like, like. Wipe your ass and then like that button. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and then leave a comment if you want. Uh, yeah. Reply to a comment. Reply to someone else's comment as if you were Grok. Yes. Everyone, start <laughs> typing prompts. And then as if you were Gronk in that not very- Not Gronk. Sorry. Not Gronk. Not Gronk. Grok. Grok. If you were Grok in that very specific tone, reply. Yeah. And everyone just answer your own questions down there. Yeah. Because Elon told me he is basing all of the new AI research on our comment section. Yeah. So make sure that it's cringe. But only people who subscribe, jo click the join yeah. button, turn the bell on. Those are the only ones that are going to work. Uh-huh. If they've got that little metal hands thing next yeah. to it- Then you can use Grok. That's the prompt. Yeah. No metal hands, you're the Grok. Yeah. That's right. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, over here we got our two previous videos. We got uh, Trump was in court and it was a fucking shit show. And also, yeah, Bored Apes blinded the, the last remaining owners of their NFTs. Yeah. Whoops. And on Weekly Weird News, we talked about uh, Kanye and just how everything just he did. Just a little did. life update. Yeah, just a little update on Kanye. All right, so. we'll see you soon. Uh, have a great day. Bye. Bye.